Victor Zello is bringing is going to be pretty susceptible to the Haven. Oh yeah, with the Cleric Lancers? Yeah. And we have uh, Durzello going second with Aggro Blood versus Haven, which is... Y you never want to go second, period, with this deck. <laughs> oh, you have Curate. Yes, he does have two Curates on the list as well. Very interesting. How do you feel about turn two Claw, this, uh, this Heavenly Hound that's coming out? Hmm. It feels bad, but it's just, if you, you play the Vania, then your opponent can just, you know... Trade into it? Well, yeah. if he trades into it, you can still, you're still getting in twice with the, the Vampire. And I mean, it sets him up to Angelic Knight next turn. Yeah. It's just always so crucial to take the board early. I guess it's a better rough if your opponent has Scripture, and he's Scripture Valley Trades. Then your turn two yeah, is really weak. Bad. You just concede at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you have to kind of take the risk here because you were going second, and your opponent has board to fight you with. It kind of paid up for him. Now he's getting in a lot see. with his curse brand. Yeah, but we're gonna see March hairs into Aether, which is probably just gonna seal the game. <laughs> That is rough, but there's a there's a Scarlet on the bomb side, on Durzello's side. Yeah, and one thing to know about Durzello's bloodlist is he does not run Dance of Death, so he has no good way other than um, Scarlets to break through these Aethers. And then he has two Scarlets too. Oh, let's see, three Carables. Yeah, he's running Triple Carabus and one Implancer. Oh, okay. Which is actually a pretty good split, in my opinion. Do you just Evo face here in disrespect? Uh, it's kind of... The thing is, like, you can't really disrespect a Kojo, because if your opponent doesn't have any other option, they would just evolve Kojo. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it's just you're already so far behind, you just have to just say, screw it, I'm taking the risk. For two to extra damage. Hmm. Because I mean, in this situation that Durzello's in, he just has to, in my opinion, he just needs to go all phase and play around nothing. Uh, and like the Scarlet feels so awkward here. Yeah. You gotta do it though, because turn six you have Bloodkin Night Horde. Looks like he's evoing face here. Or is he trading? Yeah, he's going face. But now he's gonna get completely walled by this uh this aether coming down. <laughs> uh, at least the aether can't evo into the three four. Cause he has to run the tin soldier into the scarlet. Yeah. Uh, but we're gonna see Aether and a Cleric Lancer, and then next turn Curate comes down. <laughs> yeah. You just, uh, no, you know, just undoes like six turns of work. <laughs> yeah, the Curate is super rough too. Even with just this Cleric Lancer, you have to. You can do four damage to it with the bats, and then you have to run an evil into it. You gotta do it. Yep, you just do this and hope your opponent doesn't have um, the MS basically. Yep. Because he has 5 from hand. Yeah, that does counter the curate. Oh. Is curate better than cleric lancer there though? Um. I think it is because you get to kill the wraith at the same time. So you take four off the board and then you heal five. So you're essentially healing nine. Yeah, it's nine effective health. Huh? 
All in, so, boys. Um, I don't think Durzella has a way to get through this other cleric lancer. <laughs> yeah, this is where you wish you really yeah. had a dance to death. Yeah, no one card off the top wins in the game. So I think Durzella's pretty much done with this uh, this game. He, he can even play super safe and start trading. Oh yeah, he can just full trade here. Play the curate. I think this turn he goes and damage. I think this turn he goes Angela, Angel of Word and uh, Cleric because he plays on curve and gets to That's remove true. more stuff. Because he knows that there's no 5 damage top deck. But by doing this he does make it so his opponent could like chain top deck Razory Claws. Mm -hmm. Because if Durzello sees, like if he top decks a Razory Claw this turn, he can then bump the bat into the Cleric Lancer and board lock. Um, lodge and make it so. Yeah, that's true. Raise reclaw isn't out. You could go face with the seven damage then and just set up two turns. I think that's the right play here. Because yeah. these two fallers don't do anything. And he knows that uh, the lodge does, or he knows that Drizella doesn't run Dance of Death, and even Dance of Death doesn't win it. Yeah. So that, so by going face there, I think he checkmates Drizella. Yeah, he plays around the only way he could lose. It's an early win with that Haven deck. But, like you said, it was probably pretty good against Log um, Dercello's lineup in general. Pretty much. I mean... I think the only one that... It could potentially get cheesed by would be like the dirt rune since it's running dance of death mutagenic bolt wizardess oh yeah and they just have like direct burn yeah he has uh, a lot of direct burn he's running triple demonic strike in this list as well oh god i guess so that's for the d shift the... matchup yeah it's the uh... if i just brought d shift then their zealot would be in pretty good shape I think a lot of players expected that people would try counter D shift, so they purposely didn't bring it. That's what I did when I when I played in the King of the Hill. Way back in season one, I just brought four aggro decks to try and counter out D shift. <laughs> oh, no one drop here. Oh, feels bad, man. There's only going second two games in a row. That's just unlucky. I mean, at least it's a, a weak two drop, though. It's like, if Dragon Summoner was like a 2 1, that would be disgusting right here. <laughs> oh, he's gonna I go for the not to play the ramp. Instead, they just play the second Dragon Summoner and clear. I think I could respect that. <sighs> yeah, because I mean, that Vania threatens a lot more. Two damage. Yeah, it could deal like possibly four with the Blikens. However, it would make him a bit weaker to a bite this turn. That's true. I don't. Does there's only even run bite? No, he does not. Oh, okay. Then he doesn't have to worry about that. Angelic Knight is his three drops. Right, right. But I mean, looking at. At these hands, um, it looks like Dragon's pretty favored right here. <laughs> hey man, I want a game again. I want a game against Dragon where they had triple Sybil, but I want off double Carabos passive. I mean, it's definitely possible for Durzello to win, but uh, he's gonna need some really, really good draws. Mhm. Mm because Sybil activates this turn. And he's gonna have to run the Scarlet. That is a six seven. Well, yeah, because he's trading seven. into the bats, right? Because there's Night Horde otherwise. The bats. I don't think there's a reason why you wouldn't disrespect the bats. Because you also just protect your Sybil more so you can heal more. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows turn five Scarlet. You gotta play around that. But this is just such a feels bad man turn. He Do can... Razory Claw. Angel of the word. Yeah, I think that's actually. Or he's gonna go Night Horde, okay. 
Maybe. Uh, I don't know about that. See, you'd rather have the claw than an evil. Well, the way he sees it, everything he plays is getting removed the next turn. Yeah. So it's not like these evos are going to get in extra damage. And this I also is... I mean, next turn if his opponent plays Sybil again, he just Karabosses over it. But then he gets two turn lethal by Zeus into Genesis <laughs> Dragon. Yeah, it would be with that, um, with that Isla played now. Because you can't kill yeah. both. And he has to play Karabos here. Yeah, he doesn't have a choice. Technically, Scarlet Death would heal him out of range. I mean, it but would, you can't but you can't deal with the board. Then he has no answer to a Zeus, which even here he doesn't have the answer, anyways. Yeah. So yeah, this is just two turn lethal setup. Unless, he, unless he takes a trade here. Like this, I let trade into Carabos. It's too good to pass up. Yeah, and then he just hits face with Zeus, and then... Oh yeah, and Zeus hits like again. no way to remove this. <laughs> so he pushes 12 next turn. Yeah, you're right. I mean, technically, he could have... He could have Scarlet to put him two turns out, and then Jansen just runs him over twice. Yeah. yeah. That, that Duzello could win from this situation. Oof. Agro Blood taking two L's. It's not something you see every day. The see, the thing is, I don't like Agro Blood in the tournament setting. Because on ladder, where you're just concerned about, you know, speed of the games, it's, you're, it's not that bad if you just, you know, you pretty much concede when you go second. But in a tournament setting, I feel that Vengeance Blood is much more consistent, like an aggressive Vengeance Blood, than just raw aggro blood. Hmm. Because Vengeance Blood can still win going second, and it has, you know, the power spikes with Karabas and a Diabolic Drain, stuff like that. Yeah, Diabolic Drain. And aggro blood going second three games in a row. Ooh, do you, ho do you hold that Ceres ever? I think you would have, honestly. He was going first, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, even still, it's not like you're... Like, most oh, he got back. You go over the series. Yeah, you could just drop it on turn four. Well, came back for him, so he gets to... Probably play it, or he might play that Necro Assassin. So I think you spiderweb this turn just to preserve your board state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Vinya just dies. You could possibly get Vinya out with Bloodkins. Yeah, Vinya Bloodkin Evo on turn four is the ideal going second play for this deck. Mm hmm Yeah, I think uh the BKV nerfs are what really made Agro Blood less consistent. I mean B BKB was just overpowered. BK yeah, it was, it was broken as hell, but it was <laughs> it, it hurt the deck's consistency losing BKB. Okay, so he could potentially uh, just like curse blood or cur curse brand vampire into Vania, and yep. then do you kill the soul squash over? Or you just go face. Uh, I think you double trade into the Androlfius maybe. Oh, that's it preserves board. your board state. Yeah. And then the uh, the Soul Squasher still dies when it trades into anything. Alright, here we go. Ooh. So he can Evo the Vania, then Nightmare, oh the Necro Assassin, and go face. That's so dirty. That is disgusting. Because, yeah, that, now that ward's also protecting the Vania from Ceres. Blood might actually run away with this game. I think so too. 
I mean, he still he can't ignore the series though. Uh, so he goes up to eleven if he plays series. He's got nine on board. He needs two more damage. He has angel. Wait. Oh no, he doesn't have board space for Bloodkins. Uh, yeah. Um. Is there a way? So no. I mean, seven, eight, nine. I don't. There's no lethal here, but he can set his opponent at one. Right? Could you just yeah, play the? Could you just play the Urius? He's gonna have to cash in this summon Bloodkin's damage. I can respect that. Okay, so he puts his opponent at 1. You can't really efficiently deal with the Sarah, so you must just ignore it for a turn. At worst, next turn yeah. you could play Caraballs to kill it. Yeah, the reason that he wanted he took that line though is because the Angel of the Word always deals 1 damage, whereas Bloodkin, Bloodkin you have to have the Vania. Mm -hmm. Urius could possibly get him... If, he, if the board's clear, he could drop it. Makes it really hard to play against... Or if this Bone Chimera comes down it, and he drops Urius trades, he could like get an extra damage. Yeah. I mean, I don't see a real good answer for this. He did draw the second series, but he decided not to play it. Soul Squasher is a good pickup here. Whew. So now he could. He goes up- no, he's still dead. See, kills that, kills that, kills that. Two goes bats are up, right? Four on board, yeah. Yeah. If he had played the Ceres, would he be able to survive? Um, he would have healed to seven. And yeah. he would have been able to leave his opponent with six on board. So he would have just died to the Carabas. Oh, okay. Or the angel of the word. Uh, so Drizello stand with that blood deck until he finally got the win with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean that deck It's not that bad. I play a lot in Shalvers Radiance and it usually gets me a win. So. Yeah, the thing is, is you got the, uh... Drizella's last two decks are actually pretty good against Shadow, I think. Um, so he's got that... This rune... Dirt rune, yeah, is good. And then it was... The Holy Mage Haven. The Holy Mage Haven has scripture, though. Which, I mean, that's... That's always good, right? Yeah. But these Necro Assassins are gonna cheese the Holy Mage as possibly. Yeah. <laughs> That and Lurking Corpse, it's just a lot more answers. Yeah, but we do have Drizello going first for the first time. <laughs> yeah, but his hand is quite great. Do you trade into the Bailing here? No, you could just take the Valley Trade play which coach Yeah. I'm just thinking like if you trade into the Bailing, you could draw a card. Because you have That's nothing true. to play here. Might as well cycle some more. Oh, but the Bailing's effect did activate after, so it makes the the beast be able to trade into it. Yeah, so this makes us. I think you just remove this with Zombie Party just to to get it out of the the way. Mm-hmm. Or you, or you can look in corpse. Oh no, you can't look in corpse. Fifty fifty. I mean, if you're feeling lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's going for it. Oh, it's he... much more of a greedier play because you get to draw two more cards and you get a good payout if you hit it. Oh. Punished. So we're just going to see Earth Essence into to Starseer's Telescope. Well, that's a pretty weak play itself. Uh, yeah, not, definitely not what he was hoping to do with that turn. There's no series, at least. Yeah. The Halo Golem wouldn't have done much better though. Yeah. 
So we're seeing, um... Rogers is wasting all of his, uh, his opponent's sigils here. That's one issue with, uh, the illusionists is that if you don't draw good ways to, or if you don't draw consistent sigils, they can kind of screw you over. Mm hmm And sometimes you have, like, all the sigils and no illusionists, so your board is just full. Yeah. So you're gonna see that piercing rune right here. I guess it was the cleanest answer. He has the Wizard of Oz with two spells he could use in probably on turn seven. Next turn he's got Red Hot Ritual and plus Halo Goal, which is pretty nice. Yeah, I think Duzo is probably gonna want to wait till about turn eight or so to throw down his Wizard, just because he has so many spells in the deck. That's true. He still has two, uh, two demonic strikes, one Dance of Death, two Mutagenic Bolts, and one Piercing rune. This is a very, very burn heavy uh, rune list. Oh, there we go. You may just start hitting face. So you can red hot ritual and go in for three with the golem. Yeah, and I think you just save your evos to try and find Levi's off the top. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any point pre evolving Halo Golem, especially in Shadow where they have Soul Squashers. Yeah, Soul Squasher is just disgusting. I think they just go ahead and cash in this demonic strike. Because the Halo Golem always does three, I guess. Yeah, the so is the Demonic Strike. But I guess, it's so he can play Wizardus next turn? He might want to yeah, do that. Yeah, he can Wizardus dance the series and then Demonic Strike, demonic strike. Face. Yeah. I think that's what he's opting to do. He only draws one card off the Wizardus. That's honestly fine, because I mean, he doesn't want to draw very much off of this. I mean, he could just dance it like hard cast dance but i don't think that's hmm. right yeah halo golem doesn't do anything you have to kill the series this turn oh yeah hmm. oh Oh, so I think, yeah, he's going to use get the Evo. Just getting in there. Interesting. Is that, oh, right, right, the series wasn't involved, so it doesn't kill us. Yeah. Here comes the, most Maybe likely a Thane. Zambi party. <clears throat> do we zombie party or do we Thane? I think you Thane, actually, because it's so much harder to develop Thane. Yeah. Either way, you get blown out by a uh, by mutagenic bolt, but whatever. <laughs> also, Thane doesn't die if he has like a master mage or an earth sigil and master mage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, often they just go ahead and establish this Thane, cash in two chip damage. Yeah, like you said, the zombie part is more flexible because you don't have to enhance it. Do go off the. It's time. I don't think he has a choice. <clears throat> Didn't find the uh, the mutagenic bolt though. Mhm. Mm so that's eight. He's yep, one off lead for next turn. If he top decks a sigil. Yeah. At this point, he's just trying to burn out the shadow, cause it's... And I think you gotta dance to death. Oh yeah, you have to because you're... With your yeah. stein. <laughs> Any spell you don't play is going bye-bye. No okay, Ector so yet. An out? Oh, well, that's kind of an out. Could he potentially top deck... Witch's Cauldron... Into... I think it would have to be over two turns. Yeah, he would need ten play points to be able to like Witch's Cauldron, Halo Golem face, and to top deck another one cost sigil. Oh, that, yeah, that would be pretty insane. 
I mean, he can always just top deck the next wizard is. That's He's true. Got three of them. He used three demonic strikes already. What else did he have? Piercing runes and. He has one piercing rune, one dance of death, two mutagenic bolts. Left in the deck, or that's his build? Le left in the deck, yes. Oh, okay. Just getting some old chip damage. Oh, oh. Hello. Oh. <laughs> There's some Eekters there, and he's even got enough play points to play the series. Yeah. Mutagenic yeah, this turn was like really bolt. strong for him. Yeah, mutagenic bolt just kills him with the Eekter. <laughs> I don't think there's any out with that series. Nope. He's just gonna well, go it would have to. He would have to draw Wizardus into like Mita Jank Bolt and Piercing Rune, or something like that. Yeah. He'd have to. And he'd have to order it right too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you just, for him, he has to clear that white, otherwise he's dead on board. Oh, he's just, just going to concede. concede here. Expect his opponent to have Ector. He kills the white, then he still can't deal with the series, and his opponent's just going to outheal him. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs>